Among this vast wilderness, much of it unexplored, some believe there could be a monster that is a living relic, hidden deep in the jungle. This huge creature is said to prowl the land and lurk beneath inland waters. Natives call it Michele Mbembe, one that stops the flow of rivers. A heavy armored uh, side, scales, uh, a fringe of scales down the back. Footprints of the order of three feet in circumference. He always came out of the cave to, 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 to find food. The people call this animal Mokeli Mbembe. Eyewitnesses report seeing a creature with a long neck and a snake-like head. They say it has a body as big as an elephant with four legs, claw-like feet, and a long tail. Most of these accounts suggest it is a semi-aquatic animal that spends most of its time in the rivers that run through the jungle. I was afraid because I hadn't seen this type of animal before. Nawuya Bernard, a local fisherman, was preparing his fishing nets along the Deja River when he had a frightening encounter with the creature. The animal was walking in the river. It was long and big. Bernard says it had large, sharp teeth, and its appearance struck him with terror. What I saw were the spines which were on his back. It had a long neck. I was afraid and just one. Dongjal Ture spotted a large animal coming out of the Ja River while out in the boat. I saw this animal trying to eat some leaves. The only part of the animal we saw was the head and the neck. She says her encounter lasted less than a minute, yet left her terrified. The water was churning. The boat was shaking like an earthquake. Everything was shaking in the river. I felt very afraid. Her sighting was of something she could not explain. I've never seen another one since I've lived in the village. I never seen this uh, type of a truck that day. And it was the first time to see that type of truck. Natives call it Mokele Mbembe. I saw the Mokele Mbembe when I was very young. Edimo Ferdinand was helping his father with fishing nets when he had a frightening first-hand encounter. I was something like 150 meters away. He watched in both fear and amazement. The animal is like an elephant, but the neck is very long. It's too long. It's a very big animal. When it comes out of the water, it makes a lot of movement on the river. Not only the animal size, but the sound that it made terrified the boy. For a few minutes, the animal fed on leaves, then went back into the water. When this animal comes out of the water, you see something like a big splash. He was eating leaves and the branches were falling in the water when he was eating. Nanga Norbert was fishing one night on the Dja River when he saw the creature. Even in the dark, he could tell this was not an elephant or rhino. With something like spines on his back, long neck, long tail it's difficult to tell how big the animal was it was dark and the neck was so long that i was afraid and i just ran norbert turned his boat around and left the area he was scared for his life this animal has a reputation of breaking canoes and he kills people sightings go back generations and suggest a large-bodied creature that has a long neck small head and long tail this teacher says he collected footprints of the beast. This woman said that when the creature moved, the whole river shook. The stories of this creature have been passed down for centuries by village elders. 
The first known account of the Mopili and Bembi is in a book written in 1776 by Abby Troyard. Dr. Roy Mackle is a retired biologist and is considered the world's foremost expert on Mokele Mbembe. Explorers and traders continued to hear stories of this mysterious monster. In the late 1870s, Englishman Alfred Smith arrived on the west coast of Africa to begin a career as a trader. He later recounted, Behind the Cameroons, there's things living we know nothing about. The Jago Nini, they say, is still in the swamps and rivers. Giant diver, it means. Comes out of the water and devours people. Footprints about the size of a good frying pan in circumference. And three claws instead of five. From all the evidence that we've collected, the only logical explanation is that these are surviving small dinosaurs. In the early 1980s, Mackel made two expeditions to Africa. He was able to collect enough eyewitness testimony to convince him a dinosaur-like creature still lived in the jungle. Descriptions matched. That is an animal of the order of 25 to 30 feet, uh, 8, 9, 10 meters in length, reddish in color, with a frill on the back of the neck, a long head and neck, that looked snake-like. Mackle described the animal as reptilian. They described them as being able to submerge as a crocodile would, but being made, and they did come out on land most of the time. There just isn't anything like it at all. Witness reports indicate that the animal likely lives in the southeastern rainforest of Cameroon on the west coast of Africa. The largest group of sightings is at the meeting point of three rivers. The area is so remote that few Westerners have ever seen this part of the world or the massive, uncharted wilderness it holds. In 55,000 square miles of unexplored jungle, there's just not been anyone around to, to observe the animals, except in the rare cases. Those who have seen the creature say it looks much like this one, a sauropod dinosaur. And fossilized remains have been found on every continent except Antarctica. These herbivores are members of the same family as the Brontosaurus. They had long necks with small heads, big bodies, and claw-like feet. Identical to reported sightings of the Mokele Emembe. The locals have virtually no contact with the outside world. And what's so amazing about this is these people have nothing whatsoever to gain from telling stories because we don't pay them. They get no reward from us for doing this. They live in the forest, so uh, uh, they, 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 can, they can easily see, find the difference between Mokerembe and another type of animal. They don't know a bear or deer, but when Gibbons flips the pages to the drawing of a dinosaur, eyes open and fingers point. This is Mokelembe uh, wish there, so this is how Mokelembe look. Every time you talk about Mokelembe to backers or to people who live around the river, they, they only describe it as animal with a long neck and a head like a snake. This convinces Gibbons that the sightings are not a case of misidentification. But we come to the conclusion that this is definitely a different unique animal in its own right. But some experts simply don't believe it is possible for such an animal to exist. Dr. Donald Prothero is a professor of geology at Occidental College in Los Angeles. He says science by nature rules out their existence. Prothero believes the sightings could be a result of mistaken identity. And they have a very different idea about what is real and what is legendary in cultures like that than we do in Western culture. Science is not about absolutes. Science is about probabilities. We never say never in science, even for things that are extremely improbable. He says science by nature rules out their existence. We never say never in science. Prothero believes the sightings could be a result of mistaken identity. But Prothero believes the sightings are not a case of misidentification. But some experts simply don't believe it is possible for such an animal to exist. We never, we never say, say never, never in science, science even for things that are extremely
The bones of the animal that is now Brontomerus were discovered in a quarry in Utah in the 1990s. The bones were recovered and taken back to the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History. And they sat there for the next uh, five or ten years before I first saw them. But a colleague of mine, Matt Wadel, had, had an interest in them for a while, never got around to working on them. So when I happened to be over there in 2007, I was with Matt and uh, we took the opportunity then to look at the bones really closely and start figuring out exactly what this thing was. This picture shows us which of the bones we have of the animal and also gives you an idea of how big it would have been in life. Here we have the hip bone, here the shoulder blade, those are the, the two most significant bits we have, and then these various fragments of ribs and the occasional vertebra. This is a photograph of the hip bone, which is the, the most informative of the bones of the new animal. Down here at the bottom, this is the socket where the, the femur attaches, so this is where the leg joins the body. And you can see that here at the front, sticking out the head of that, is this huge blade of bone where a lot of muscle would have attached. And let me show you how that compares with a couple of animals here at the Grant Museum. So here we have the hip of a false gharial. It's closely related to crocodiles. This is the socket where the femur joins the hip. And you can see here that this bone here, this is the equivalent of the one that we have in Brontomerus, has almost no bone coming out here forward ahead of that socket. Whereas in this baboon, this blade of the hip bone is much, much longer. You can see it coming out forward here. And this gives you a lot of attachment area for muscles here that would have run all the way down and attached to the femur. And that gives it powerful legs. And that's how Brontomerus would have been as well, would have had very powerful legs, muscular thighs, and that's why we gave it the name. Brontomerus means thunder thighs. One of the things that could have been used for is delivering a powerful kick. What's most likely is that that kicking behaviour would have initially involved as a way for males to compete for the attention of females and dominance displays. There's every reason to think that that kick would have been used as well for defence against predators. We actually found the remains of at least two individuals of Brontomerus of very different sizes. So we like to think that there could have been a mother and a child. And here we have the mother defending the child from a Uteraptor, which is like the raptors in Jurassic Park, but bigger and scarier. Roughly speaking, you can think of the adults as being like a very big elephant and the, the juvenile as being more like the size of a smallish cow. There are museums all around the world that are full of specimens that uh, there's so much work waiting to be done on them, which is why uh, an armchair paleontologist like myself never has to actually go out into the field and get my hands dirty, I don't have to dig. All I need to do is scavenge around museum shelves and there's ever such a lot of work to be done there.
the Ancients! Silver Sword! Dino Knight ready! Let's... Do it! Dino Brachio, power of the Ancients! Axe of Valor! Dino Knight ready! Dino Stego, power of the Ancients! Ha-ha! <laughs> Stego Skeletal Revolution! Dino Knight ready! Dino Saber, power of the Ancients! Saber Wailing Whip! Dino Knight ready! Dino Terra, power of the Ancients! Terra Bristled Boomerang! Dino Knight ready! Tricera, power of the ancients, Tricera Spears of Jade. Beautiful! This Dino Knight is ready! Dino Mammoth, power of the ancients, Mammoth Tusks of Vigor. Dino Knight ready! Dino Scirocco, power of the ancients. Scirocco sort of stealth. Dino Knight, ready for Dry Blade's fusion. One for all, and all for one. Brother, till the end. Hustle Moon Sword. Hustle Sun Sword. Dino, Dino Knight, Knight, ready. Integrate! One for all, and all for one! Stop for the 
Questioning my orders? Uh, of course not, Your Highness. I was merely. Enough! <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, Her Eminence saw that you were feeling a bit under the weather, not to mention the fact that Tirana was about to knock you into next week. So she sent me to bring you back. And you know her orders are orders, so back you go. Ah. Wow! Either you're a lot heavier than I thought, or I'm a lot weaker than I used to be. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. It's as though something is draining all of my... <sighs> Your energy? <laughs> <laughs> the power! I'd forgotten how it feels! <laughs> You should take it on the road. <laughs> the s Observe. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Slasher Storm! Axe of Venom! Drago Stegus, power of the Dark Crystal! Drago Doctor! Lord Wicked Whip! Yeah! Here to terrorize you with Drago Power! Damn it! Drago Ceratops, power of the Dark Crystal! This Dino Destroyer is ready! Soldier fights alone, and each is as strong as a whole arm! 